Welcome <laughs> to the Self Consciousness Podcast. Hello. I am your host, Jennifer Way, and I finally got off my ass and recovered my own theme music. It was an incredibly arduous task. I had to log on to a different computer and I had to email the file to myself. I tell you the stuff I go through to bring this show together. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. You didn't have to, but you did, and that means a lot. You can find us on Instagram at the Self Consciousness Podcast. Feel free to slide into our DMs. On today's episode, oh my God, we welcome Karen Rontowski, host of the top rated long running podcast, Paranormal Karen. Karen is a tarot card master and teacher, as well as a ridiculously amazing comedian. She graciously joins us to talk about what the hell is going on in the world today, dimensional shifts and what have you, as well as some spooky paranormal stories, can't even say the word, and just like how the heck we balance it all with comedy. Go to her website now, seriously now, to see her work. It's KarenVontowski.com. She's also performing in and around the LA area. Check her out. See you inside. Karen! Yay! Karen Rontowski, everybody! Thank you for being on the show. I am so happy to have you here. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm so excited to be here. Um, so I am a, a comedian, a tarot reader, a paranormal investigator, a vagrant. Um, I think that's, that covers most of it. I, that's the biggest chunk of it is the paranormal and the tarot. And now comedy, now that we're back. Now that we're back, but you've been a comedian for, for, that was your, basically your main, your main thing. That was my main gig for 30, yeah. over 30 years. Uh, and when I was, I started when I was 24, I'm 55. And yeah. then I went, uh, I went to my favorite tarot reader. I still call her my mentor when I was right around the same age. And she said, you should buy a deck. So I bought a tarot deck and I use, I just got, um, you know, was always studying, always learning, not, not, you know, doing anything big with it. And then, uh, when I was doing 30 to, you know, 35 weeks a year on the road, I was like, this is too much. So I yeah. opened that. I thought I, I kind of had a nice little two weeks on the road, two weeks doing tarot. And, uh, that's how it all got into movement sort of. Wow. That's <laughs> pretty much my dream. I, I, I'm just, I, I'm so excited to talk to you because we have talked once before I did come to you for a reading and, and I feel like reading just like, doesn't do it justice. Cause it was so like filled with so much information that it was, yeah, it was phenomenal. And, and I just love talking to you because you're, you're warm, <laughs> you know, like, I, <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I mean, I, I <laughs> A little, a little sweaty overnight <laughs> sometimes, but, um, yeah. Right. But, but it's like, it's just the energy that you, that you carry. It's it, for me, it's, it's just, it really is very, and I'm going to get a little like woo woo on you, but, um, but that's why we're here, <laughs> but it's just so divine feminine, you know, oh, well, thank the, you. the sort of coming from that, that aspect of like care concern, let's work together on this even just listening to your podcast, it's just, it's the way you approach things. And I'm just so happy that your voice is out there for people like me to find and, well, that <laughs> and sink so our sweet. teeth into and stalk <laughs> you and text you when you don't expect it. And things well, like that. thank you. I have that. I think I have that mothering quality because I don't have kids. Yeah. So I, uh, I do, but I don't have that quality. <laughs> So I am a Leo. So like, if I get mad, it's one of those terrible, terrible angers. <laughs> but like, that's just truth, you know? Yeah. Do you feel like the new sort of world that we're entering into? It's at first glance, you wouldn't suspect that comedy and spirituality or those fields would really necessarily go together but I'm finding like, this is the place I want to be. <laughs> I want to, <laughs> I want to talk to people who have done this, who have, have brought these things together and you have done so. And, well, and it's, you. it's really, it's really beautiful to see and like great to watch. Like what's, 
how do you reconcile what I guess, you know, the big audience would would sort of see as two completely different things. You know, I, I see your stand up and I and then, you know, you will talk a little bit about the paranormal stuff. And, and I'm just like, how does that go over? Like, how how do you how do you approach that? Well, it was a definitely an evolution kind of just came together. And what happened was because these are the things I do. They're, they're my life. They all come together. There's actually another um, uh, comedian that's a friend of mine named Ryan Singer, who mm -hmm. if you don't know Ryan, uh, he has a paranormal podcast too. So funny. Yeah. Um, and it's really just kind of who we are. The only thing was in the beginning there were th like, even now, I didn't realize in the middle of my act, my segue will be, so I went to a UFO conference <laughs> and I, I forget that that's funny. And I, and I was like, oh, they laughed at that. Or um, I, there was this point where you have to make sure what you're talking about either um, crosses over, you know, you can't really just bring up Mothman, but you gotta, <laughs> you gotta make sure it crosses over or it has to be so far out like uh, one of the lines that I say is I thought that uh, aliens implanted a tracking device, but it just turned out to be a Frito in my underwear. So <laughs> I'm, I'm like mouthing the joke back to you. So even Locker. if they don't, yes, they don't know a tracking device or aliens. They're like, oh, well, that's so stupid. Yeah. Cause they felt you taking them down this road and they're like, where is this going? And then come <laughs> like, just to see people just crack up on that. Like, yes, I did a, um, I have a whole story and I keep telling people this is coming out and hopefully it's coming out this year because I finally did it. I have a show called Psychic Stand Up and there's one of the CDs that's out on YouTube if anybody wants. It's called Psychic Stand Up Valentine's Edition. That's 40 minutes of doing tarot and making it funny on stage. Uh, but uh, I had, because these are my experiences, I had a very bad experience in my apartment where uh, we did a witchcraft and something attached to me. And I know, and it was awful at the time, but I was telling someone about it and they were laughing so hard that I was like, oh, is this, this has to be. And they were like, yes. So I was trying to shoot it as like a 30 minute special, but everything now is so unorganized. You know, the clubs aren't sure what they're doing. So I think I'm going to shoot it. Um, it's like a little movie. So I, hopefully someday I'll be out, but it was funny how it was so awful at the time. And now it's just, people are hysterical. <laughs> yeah. Attachment. I don't even know. I, I think as soon as if, if I do start bringing that up to people who don't really know about it, their only reference is movies. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they just get, they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to know about it. I don't want to, I don't want to hear about it. They get like really <laughs> freaked out. And I'm like, yeah, you should be scared. Cause it's totally scary, but whatever you think of it as like a tick, you know, it's like, you gotta, well, oh, we shouldn't say that. Sorry, Jessa. No, yeah, <laughs> everybody, yes, everybody's listening. got Lyme disease yes. <laughs> got Lyme disease. or lice. Ooh, maybe lice is the more lice. like a, now I'm, just kind of, I know. <laughs> no, don't say, are you guys itchy too now? Sorry. Powers of suggestion. I, exactly. it was funny. I was like trying to think of one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was like, I, what's your experience with um, kind of where everything is energetically, like this whole story of Ascension? What's, what's your take on, on kind of like where we are, what's changing right now? You know I, I mean? yes, I have a, um, I'm a little bit uh, kind of flabbergasted right now because a couple of things are going on, which yeah. is I had my astrology lady that I watched all the time. And she was like, to the minute you could bank on her. And now everything's off a little bit. Like she's not, and I don't think it's her, yeah. but something definitely happened. I really thought that September or January 6th should have been bigger that, that they, when they were going at the Capitol, I felt like this, we had all this big giant ball of rage, everybody, both sides. And it was supposed to explode that day and be done. And it wasn't exploded. And, um, I feel like the, all the rage didn't get out and now it's been swept under the rug. And I feel like there's this underlying worry. I can't quite relax. I'm booking comedy stuff for the fall. And I'm like, we're not going, are we? I like, I can't, oh. I, I think we got another lockdown coming. Number one. Yeah. I um, feel like that too. And I, but I, I'm very, um, 
for the past week or so, I've been like, is something bad happening? Does anyone else have that feeling? And I thought, you know, what was it? July 14th, I had said there'll be cyber attacks and they didn't happen in LA, but apparently there was a lot, but something is brewing. I don't know. Yeah. Something is, I know we're all going to be okay. So I don't like to scare people, yeah. but it's, it's just, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's Yeah that's like so on that's exactly what i've been feeling especially about i, I think J january 6th also um i felt um when i could sort of see it visually and i did talk about this on a on an earlier episode because i was like i'm gonna put out a podcast it was like the beginning of the year <laughs> and then like all that shit happened like the day i was like i have these messages that i'm gonna need to put out this episode and people are going to hear my voice. And then like the next day was the Capitol riots. And that's when I decided to like, I was like, Oh, all right. That's, it was a good, good ego thing. Like, all right, no, not going to pay attention to me, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, like I got this image it more clo like closer to like January during inauguration where I was expecting this and I could feel that swell. And it looked to me sort of visually like in the third eye, kind of like this huge shadow, almost like dragon monster that was just like rising up and like swelling up and like, Rah! and then it just collapsed. And because it felt like um, a very fluid type of thing, I felt like it was almost this huge tidal wave of wounded masculine and, and it swept up this gunk and everyone was trying to swim in it. And I was mm. like, oh, cause I guess the download I got around that time was that everyone's affected by wounded masculine because it's, it's within me, it's in, within any gen, regardless of gender or, you know, orientation or, or whatever, um, assigned or chosen. So it's like, we all, <laughs> we have to add that, but we all like, we're all kind of, I don't know. And, and then I was like, I'm feeling like from this masculine energy or the way I kind of witnessed it showing up in my life, I'm feeling it kind of grasping. Like, you know how, when mm. you're drowning and someone's like hanging on to you, um, I felt a lot of that kind of thing. And, and then I, I knew that like divine feminine would, it would take a sec for divine feminine to start kind of pulling it up. But I, I don't know. I mean, I, again, I do feel it's, it's like, there's also this masculine feminine thing going on and I'm just seeing it with the dynamics of like men and women everywhere around me, like personally with friends having the, you know what I mean? Like I know that and another, in fact, it's very funny because on TikTok, I don't know, I'm sure my algorithm, uh, I don't actually do a lot of dating and algorithm stuff. And all these men are popping up now and like the hands, not there's a lot of men on there anyways, but the men doing this, <laughs> that there was a really a guy the other day that was like things men love that they won't tell you. And it's like, when you touch our arm, when we talk or when you play with our hair. And it was like this, it was like, uh, he was right. Men don't usually say, you know, when you massage my neck when we're driving, it was very like this really handsome macho guy was doing all these, like almost saying, we love your feminine side. And they don't usually say that. So I thought, well, it started. But another thing is the paranormal is here now. It's here. There's no I don't know, you know, I know the veil is sort of in our consciousness, like what we're, what we can see, but I will tell you, you it, manifesting is happening almost instantaneous, good and bad. And bad has a lot of momentum behind it right now, oh, but God, I, yeah. spirits and, um, angels, I, I got very, um, I keep going to study what the archangels look like. Yeah, it, because I heard you talking it, about that with Jessa. Yeah. yeah, and I I had a clear audience one morning. I went to sleep and I was dreaming about one of them. And I woke up. It was the um, what are they called? They have all the wings. The uh, seraphin. Seraphin. Okay. Yeah. I know uh, what you're talking about. I, I woke up with a voice in my ear because I had a dream about them and the voice said, "Yeah, that's what we look like." And I was like, "What?" So I almost think it was a. It's right there. It's right here. Eek. I feel like, I'm like, <laughs> like, I don't want it to be right there. Can you guys go back into the veil of my, oh God. I, 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 I always like alternate between, um, cause I know the stuff, the work that you've done and, and sort of like the ghost hunting and you guys, you have to go onto her website. 
Um, I'll, I'll leave all the information. It's karenrontowski.com, but she's got some YouTube clips of, of just these, these sort of productions that I, I, you know, these like stories about the fairy, it, like, it's just, it's just really funny. It's like, starts out like a, like, like true ghost hunting form. And then, and then you just goes pe- pepper it with this <laughs> freaking hysterical, uh, narration, but, um, and your parents too. Like that's, that's yes. the other thing I love watching. Um, <laughs> they're so funny yeah, yeah I, I might bring that little series back that was a little paranormal Karen it was very fun but uh yeah I I just you know what it is I feel like there's another dimension there or something was added and it's very heavy I didn't see just this thing about that we all died which is oh very interesting oh god yeah, yeah I listened to it. it was uh heavy yeah I was like when who where <laughs> was it at the same time did we all do it at the, what was the moment? Like, I was like, was it individual? <laughs> she, <laughs> said, she said last year, I wonder if it was January 6th. I wonder if it was because there was that, I, somebody described it, maybe it was you, somebody described this perfectly, that what happened was it was supposed to be bigger and then it was almost like a movie where the director came in and said, cut, yeah. and it just, all the air went out of it. Yeah. But I would wonder if it was that because also, you know, the astrology for Joe Biden, first of all, it's that he's not going to make it to 2022, but there was really something was supposed to happen on the 20th. Something was supposed to happen on the 20th and they switched timelines. That's right. Because I remember I was doing like, um, I had a meeting that morning and I led everyone in a meditation. Cause I was like, the astrology for today is supposed is like about war. And, and it was like, there was like Mar or it was like a Mars Aries. Like there was something that Crazy. day and everyone was like, and then it was like Jennifer Lopez, Lady Gaga. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like what? <laughs> that was like, uh, what? <laughs> I like, I couldn't, you know, because like when you watch the, I didn't watch the inauguration. It was like on in the doctor's office. And I was like, no, thank you. Yeah. You could see like, yeah. I was like, oh, it's like, like back to your regularly scheduled programming, everybody like really like hard, you know, it was almost like. That almost gave me a chill how you said that, because it was like, it's like the reality of what was going on in the matrix. And then some woman pops in and goes, wait a minute, we're going to go back to the regular schedule. Regularly scheduled your programming. Like, yes, yes. Full on. Oh my God. Yeah. I, I, people were like, I liked it. It was so refreshing. (laughs) I was like, I know. Uh, But people are going back to sleep. So, so I, I just was thinking about how we are, li- we've been living in a society, probably going back to like ancient Greece, where we experience our own feelings through art and entertainment. Like mm-hmm. we can watch a movie and we'll cry that way, but like, it's a separation. So we don't, we're now like, but that sort of media entertainment world, that programming doesn't seem to be losing its grip. And, and it, it just feels like it's, it's sort of morphing a little. And I remember even during COVID people were like, oh, how do we market now to people when we're going through like a global pandemic? It's like the fact that they're working this out, that's what we need to move away from. But, but I was just kind of thinking of this idea of like um, expression of emotion and we like, it's only acceptable to us when we watch other people do it, actors on screen. Um, Ah, that's that's so true. Mm-hmm. And, and then I was kind of like, you know, we don't like we that's where that, that protection obviously comes from. But the other thing I was like, I got this message that we we thought that death had to be like a very important concept that we could wrap our heads around. We could sort of go. I remember Jessa talking about this, like um, going through the motions of experience like imagining death for people you love so that you can just kind of get over the idea of death and then it hit me that I think we have to if we're going to sort of do this ascension thing we have to do away with this concept of death because Mm. and and because like the next I'm like I sound like like I don't know um like I think we're gonna I'm gonna edit all that out that's what I like about editing I could just make (laughs) myself sound a lot smarter um 
but this concept of like, we have to create the next level of comprehension of where and how we are in for fourth density, which is something that she was talking about, but we have to remove the concept of death if we're going to go higher and we have to replace or use the concept of transformation instead. Mm, I love that. Um, I'm like thoughts, <laughs> you know, I, I, well, I think that's like, fantastic. we had to accept death before arriving to expansion, like before getting here. Yeah. And I think, you know, I think so much of the planet is dragging their feet on this. Like I, you know, so obviously I live in a world where most people are on, you know, I talk to you, we talk about this stuff. There aren't a lot of people from the outside that if I mention the Ascension, they're like, what? But when I look around, they are, it's this white knuckling to get back to normal and they don't understand normal is canceled and it's time to grow. And I feel like the split that was there before is, uh, it keeps switching. It keeps switching to a different split of people, but it's, um, it is almost like Jessa said, which I thought, is that the rapture when half go, you know, half ascend and half don't like, doesn't that sound like the, the ones that don't, it's going to sound like the rapture to them. Yeah. I, I get so, it, I love all the conspiracy theories, theories, yeah. and usually I can filter through them. But I have to tell you, since this whole COVID thing started, I'm a, at a little bit of a loss because they all could make sense. They all could be this crazy. I think that's, that's what existing in 4D is. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think... The fact that we're in 4D now is why all that stuff is kind of like mixing because it's all possible. But if Mm. we're, if once we head into like, well, I always do like we're raising up, but it's, it's really kind of to show you my biceps. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I like my wings. Sorry, but like it's it's or like we're expanding, but to get closer to this fifth dimensional reality where death is, it's not that it's transcended, but it's it's not a finite thing the way we think of it. Then, and the idea of death or escaping death causes people to do very dark, selfish, fearful things. Self- yeah. Uh, w- with that too, I feel like there's a um, like I'm. So I'm 55, but I'm in great shape. I always say I have the immune system of a Viking. Uh, I'm not worried about anything, but I'm also like, you have to take care of and enjoy your temple. Like that's part of this experience. And sometimes I have to remind myself to take, you know, because I get so doing too much. I have to remind myself to take care of the body. And I don't think people like we're just not taking care of our bodies yet as a, as a, you know, uh, I, I have neighbors that moved in. I probably I have neighbors that moved in. I always had this place was very haunted and always next to me would move in a young girl, about 30, very sensitive and psychic, always became great friends. And they were always driven out of that apartment by the haunting or whatever was in there. And so now for the first time ever, an older couple moved in that are not healthy at all all the ghosts went over there like it's almost like they cleared out of my apartment and I think it's literally about their like their physicality yeah so there's such a separation mm -hmm. they're just not embodying no they're they're every day I see them going in with pizza and hamburgs and I'm always like whoa you know and and I just think we have to take care of the whole package now. You know, I always was saying so many people were calling me that were healers. And I was always like, this seems like a lot of healers, but I have a semi prediction. If this COVID or this stuff really breaks economies, holistic healers, people, herbalists, those are going to be the only people that really sick people can afford that poor people will be able to afford. And I think it's going to raise natural path, you know, medicines uh, uh, into a better place that makes so much sense i hope so i love that yeah i'm like duh that's right and you have experience you you were talking about an experience where you were like when you were i guess when you were maybe in high school or in college you one of your jobs was to was like helping in a nursing home or or Mm. some kind of nursing um 
And I, I, ne I never have, I don't have any connection to that world or the people who do that. And I'm always like, that is like phenomenal to me that people even do that. And, and to also see that the nature of that medical and pharmaceutical fields, they've taken all the feminine out of it. Like they've taken all the healing out of it. Yes. And I was terrible. I think I, I think I maybe, <laughs> I maybe made it two weeks. It was the hardest job I ever did. And I was 16 and I just wasn't, you know, built to, you know, I, in fact, that was one of the things until I, I did, I think I did an episode with Diet. And I felt so much shame about it because I couldn't do it. But there's also a part of me that was like, I just, you know, I learned from it. That's what I got the lessons yeah. from it. But it was such a taking care of people like that was such a hard job. But I do agree, like where the pharmaceutical companies, I'm starting to wonder if they're the deep state because they're yeah. so dark and yeah. they're so, um, they're making so much money. Yeah. Um, I, I can't. It, the, even I think the face of pharmaceuticals was that one guy that went to jail that was so smarmy. Oh yeah. Yeah. And it, and there's some good pharmaceuticals that people need. It's just, it makes me crazy. I don't know anything that's, everything is getting too big. A hundred thousand small businesses went under during COVID and yet Amazon made more money than it ever has. Like all that stuff. I know it has to get worse before it gets better, yeah. but the, there's a, you, I have to separate myself from it. Cause I'm, yeah. like I said, I feel like something's coming right now, but I don't know if that means fall or what. And I just keep trying to stay in the moment. Like, Hey, your dog is still with you. You yeah. still got food. You still got friends. You know, yeah. that's all I can focus on right now. Yeah. I sound so desperate and sad. How funny is she? Uh, we're all going to die. That's part of my comedy. We're all going to die. <laughs> no, but like it's got, but the, the whole thing is it's like, if we're going to be past this or when we get past this, we've got to be able to integrate both of these things together or hold them both at the same time. And I always thought that comedy was the perfect sort of, um, it's like there's like a membrane between light and dark. And I always feel like comedy is the quickest way to push through that membrane, even if it's not sustained, but like, then it's up to you to kind of sustain it. But that's why I feel like comedians are healers. And I, and I especially, like, I especially love female comedians. Cause I'm like, well, that's like just divine feminine healing coming back. I mean, like, it's just going to come back in that format. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I, I always say it's funny, uh, because uh, I always say too, comedians are anarchists and we, whether you're making fun of commercials or you're making fun of the political system. And one of my favorite things from George Carlin, the, the crowd was going nuts and they were cheering and he was like, yeah, you guys don't care about me. And they're like, no, we love you. And he's like, nah, you don't understand when I'm gone. There'll just be another one. He goes, even if the whole world was wiped out and there were only seven people left, the minute you started to rebuild, there would be one guy standing there going, you're not doing that right. <laughs> and I, that, that's what I think it is, you know? Yeah, it's, it, yeah there is something definitely um, healing about comedy, it, but it's very interesting too, because it has such a dark side also. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget this girl saying, you know, sometimes when I go into comedy clubs, I just feel like really mean words are written on the walls. And I thought that's a very interesting concept, but we do, we need all kinds of humor to yeah. get through this. I know my, uh, at one point I was pushing uh, paranormal shows, comedy paranormal, and nobody would touch it. Nobody was even going to come near it. And I was yeah. having, and my manager at that time had said, when something is, you know, it's mainstream when it hits comedy. So it's too like cult right now. And then when it hits mainstream, it'll, they'll know you'll see it done funny. Yeah. My, my brain is like, ah, I have so many things I want to say. <laughs> I, we, we had talked about this a little bit on our phone call about, I was like, I think I'm dark. Like, I think I've been coming from the dark, from a really dark place. I think there's a lot of light there, but I, I feel like we're, we're, we're popping up out of the, out of the soil right now. And it's that, that seedling stage where it's like, we were just there. <laughs> like we're really still close to the shit. Yeah. Yes. And I, you know, it's funny cause, uh, and I've been doing some intense therapy too, and a lot of stuff to put it all together. Yeah. But um, I, I'm starting to just, we, you should we say have, like, you're welcome when, when you say that I'm doing heavy, it's because it's for <laughs> everyone else too. It's like, I'm, 
Yes, I'm trying. When I kill my <laughs> shit, it's for you too. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I love welcome. that attitude. It takes it right <laughs> off of me. Um, I, I feel like we're, there is this weird thing right now about, it's not a who am I because I know who I am. In fact, it's very interesting when I'm going to get a little spooky again. Um, Do it. When, it. <laughs> when I've seen several people who actually have, I'll just say very bad energies around them that tend to take them over. And it is said when you, when something like that happens or you encounter something like that, they take over your mind. And I remember when I was in a situation like that, a very, very bad situation in a very, very bad haunting. All I knew was to sit there and keep saying, I'm Karen Rontowski. I know who I am. I'm Karen Rontowski. I know who I am. And I feel like that kind of saved me in that moment. And my other partner didn't, she got really kind of, it didn't go as well for her, but I think that's the part that we have to hang on to. Even right now, it's like, I have to hang on to that and just go into the shadow work. Okay. I am Karen Rontowski. Karen Rontowski yells at refrigerator salesmen. Karen Rontowski does crazy things, you know? But also just knowing and accepting that is all the work we can do because we are in a dark night of the soul. Like I probably a lot of people, it's a, it's a depression, but it's not a personal depression. And there's part of me that's like, I know I love comedy, but I can't get excited about it. I know I love this right now, but I can't get excited about it. And I, it, it's a, uh, it does the dense density is the word that really seems to resonate with me. I hope yeah. I'm making sense. It totally makes sense. <laughs> it, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like you could have, could have gone on for like another hour and I, I yeah, <laughs> I'm one of the things that, that was coming to mind is um, a couple of months ago, I remembered a dream and I don't have really crazy prophetic dreams or anything like that, but, but it, I was inside a house and I was looking out of the window and, um, what it looked like from the view, it looked like the, the house was um, spinning and it looked like, like, let's say like the house broke up, uh, like broke off of its foundation and was like tumbling. It's what you would see out of the window. Wow. So it was almost like that. And then at one point I grabbed my son in the dream. I don't know where my daughter was. Sorry, Charlotte. And, um, <laughs> and just kind of like put him on my back and just held on to him. And, but the house didn't feel like it was shaking, but it was everything outside of the house that was moving. And then when I did a little work to kind of dig into it after, you know, the next day, I was like, oh, this is, this is just a little bit of a, like, this is what the world is going to be. Um, it's going to look like everything is tumbling, but you're safe sort of like in this, <laughs> but at the same time, it's a little bit of like, go ahead, be an agoraphobic person. That would be great. <laughs> like, why don't you go hide forever <laughs> behind a screen? But it was, but it was also like, it was kind of encouraging. It's like, as long as we kind of keep that center, the world is good. It's going to be like a little tumultuous out there. Mm-hmm. You know, that's interesting. Cause I don't really have I don't think I have prophetic dreams, but I had a dream. I walked outside and the sky went black and I've had two clients tell me that same thing that they had dreams like that, where just the sky went black or something almost along that same lines. So something is coming, you know, it's funny, the access uh, that we have to information right now, because I, my, I went over to see my other neighbor today, who's 72 and she was all excited about something. And I was like, what? And she said, I got resolution in all of my dreams. And I was like, what? And she was like, there was this guy I met 30 years ago. We never got to go out. He came to me in my dream. We went out on a date. I always wanted to live here. I, I got in the dream. I couldn't get on my airplane. And then they said, no, we held the plane for you. She had all these things that were coming together. And all I could think was, is she passing away? And she's closing out timelines. Oh that's literally what I was thinking when you were saying that it's I know like she, being packed up. It's like, it's her life review while she's alive. Yes. And she's, and she's getting resolution. She was, it was very, I was almost felt a little creeped out, but I wasn't going to tell her. So I was just like, Hey, I think you're going to die. No, I didn't say that. <laughs> I mean, after hearing your episode with Augie Smith, I'm like, <laughs> I died during that episode. And you didn't even talk to me. So it was a good thing. Yeah. Like I, I had a dream last night that I walked out and this happens a lot is I look and I can see very far away and I see a plane 
literally do this, just mm. nose dive straight into the ground. It happens. A lot. I've had those dreams before, but I don't know what they mean. I should probably check in with my guidance to see what it means. I, that's wow. another thing. I haven't been checking in with <laughs> guidance like at all. I feel like I can't well, get into a reading space. I just, I try to get into, even with my friend, I was like, yesterday we were hanging out and I was like, I was like, just ask me a question. And I was like, I can't, I, mean, I can't get there. I don't know what's going on. You know, that's interesting. That Well, that's why I sort of love tarot. Um, I, I don't mean to do this as a weird plug, but I teach a tarot class, please, but I teach, oh, <laughs> My class is about the exact symbolism of the cards, yeah. because if the intuition isn't kicking in, I can go right to symbolism, which then kicks off the intuition. Yeah. But, you know, uh, so I have a weird, um, I had another Claire audience that was very strange, which was woke up in the morning and that same voice was saying, Karen, you're in so much pain. And I was like, I don't think I am. And then I was like, am I that disassociated from myself and my emotions? And I started to crack that open. Like I was yeah. like, oh, that is kind of true. I am a little, you know, and tarot takes me out of my body half the time. So that's comfortable to not be in there. <laughs> oh <my> um, God. <laughs> but I was like, you know, I'm all up here, up in the yeah. top chakras. And um, so I started to dig into that. And it was really, uh, it really has opened up a lot, but the, the, um, the other thing, when you were saying, I think that you probably can do readings. It's a different, you shift it into a different space with it. I started taking a, a mediumship class and it's mediumship for witches, which is an amazing class, but I try to stay away from witchcraft yeah. um, because it always goes a little wrong. So I'm tiptoeing through this, yeah. but it was like, I really want to learn mediumship. And I swear after the first class, it was immediate. I felt someone follow me and, and we didn't even get into the mediumship part, but it was almost like that intention went in and then there was people here. And the next day I did a, I, someone came into my meditation and it was, uh, I think I'm on the right track. It was a girl and I had her age and how she drowned and where she was and Googled it and it all hit. So, but it feels different. It feels different. Sometimes, you know, I, one thing the lady said in the class is she said, um, if you're not feeling connected. And I think I don't always feel connected, but it doesn't mean I'm not. Does that make sense? Mm, yeah. And that actually really helps me. <laughs> yeah. Cause I yeah. think you're probably spot on and you're, you know, maybe it's just happening. Maybe it's actually getting easier that there, that the guidance is like uh, continuous now. So you're not noticing uh, when it's off or on. And, and I, I don't know about you, but whenever, maybe if you learned this stuff in the past, there's always been like, first, you got to clear your space and say a <laughs> prayer to this. And then you got to let a candle and then say, prayer. I literally was so confused and overwhelmed because like gem triple Gemini, I realized. So it's, it's, I'm a like the sun <laughs> rising and my Venus is in Gemini. So I'm like all over the place. So there's six of me, wow. but, no, but like, <laughs> but just kind of, I would in the beginning, I would, I'll be like, oh, I'm studying Egyptian stuff. So I have to say this prayer to ISIS. And then I'd be like, oh, we'll throw Archangel in there. Oh, like maybe the alien guide as well. And like, I would do, I started like cutting and pasting three different rituals that I got from three different people just to kind of put them together and be like, this is what I'm doing to get into my thing before I'm working with a client. But my guides started saying to me in all of my readings, and I don't, I may have mentioned this to you, but they started saying, uh, rehearsal. And that just the only word I could get Then the reading would stop. And the only word I could get was rehearsal. And, and another medium friend, Ryan, um, she had, she kind of dug into it for me. And, and she's like, yeah, they're just, they're just saying like, you're, you're too rehearsed with it. You're, you're, there's, you're limiting the connection because you're actually getting a lot more than you think. So that kind of makes sense what you said, but I, I also, yeah, I also think sometimes, uh, it doesn't feel, I, I, you know, it's funny because I know another reader that says, tells almost the same story that I'm about to, or they almost same situation. And she's like, it was terrible because I learned to read tarot when I was drinking in bars and that was bad and there was negativity and it was, I shouldn't have done that. And I'm always like, no, nah, I can read anywhere because I learned reading in bars and it was drinking and it was great. <laughs> so, 
so I guess it has a little, a little too, but I've been, I'm oh, as a disciplined sense. person. Yeah. I haven't been very ritualistic about it. And the only thing that I feel like I, I it's always different for everybody, but I feel like if I can get a meditation in mm-hmm. that has a protection in it, no matter what I switch them up a lot, I can usually fall right in. But I think that's why people like tarot because tarot has a, a, a path anyways, you know, yeah. Um, cause when you do it your way that like just channeling stuff, that can be really hard, I think. Yeah, no. Yeah. It's, it's definitely, I, cause I, I try to sort of break down the mechanics of it and I realize I can't because yeah. I go from headspace into heart space and I'm like, something happens. And I, it literally feels like I'm, I'm like throwing a kite up into the wind and I'm like, if it catches the wind, then I've gotten into the flow or like a fishing line or something. And then I'm, I'm connected with this person. I've had the intention, but I think it's also arriving to the intention. And, and it's mm-hmm. like, we, we know that that's really what it's all about. And sometimes the intention I'll say it, but it's, I haven't connected with it. So that's rough too. Yeah. <laughs> so rough that's for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, right now it is rough. It is. Cause I like to say most of my readings, I spend half on the cards and half off. And everybody's like, you should just go off the cards, but it is a, it's a nice security blanket. And if someone's coming to me for a reading, I'm going to make sure they get the best reading they can at another time. It'll be okay. But, um, but yeah, I, um, I think that's a way it's, it's a, it almost goes back to me being disassociated from my body, not even knowing how much pain I'm in. And it wasn't physical pain, but it was like, it was a a mechanism uh, uh, that worked up here, but I don't know. Does that make any sense? It does make sense. And I, I, I kind of, it's, it's something I think about often, probably almost every day. I'm like, am I really happy? Or, or when people check in with you and ask you how you are and you're like, how am I? <laughs> you're like, well, like right now, this second, great. Great. You know, not amazing, not horrible. Could be right. worse. I don't even know what to say anymore to people because I'm like, <laughs> I, I is. <laughs> you know, like instead of I am. I well, love that. <laughs> I just don't know what to tell people anymore. Yeah. I mean, I, and you know, it it leans heavily into the um uh I was listening to a book on Hindu astrology today. I don't really ever finish a book, but I usually the first chapter is good, then I'm happy. I've gotten enough out of it. But um it was it was he was saying how this the the other side doesn't help you if you're complaining. They don't like to be around complainers. And I love that because there is something about the regrouping of what we think our gratitude is right now. Yes. You know, because, because I'm always like, I always have to have it. I have, no matter how bad things are, I have some of the the greatest things in my life that I like every day. I thank God for my dog who's 17 and seems to be getting healthier for some reason. And I, I don't know what that is, but was, he used to have bad hips. His hips are fine now, all kinds of stuff. But I always say, uh, first thing in the morning, I look at him and I say, thank you for every moment I've had and will have with my dog. Who's kind of like my, my twin soul. Yeah. Um, because it's, it is, you know, I don't know. It's that important that we find something. There's so many good things. I bet you that's why his he's doing well. I, you know, I, I you know he's the vets spend thousands of dollars at the vet and they can't believe how well he's doing. So <laughs> it's doing something. Somebody's <laughs> making money and, and my dog is fine. <laughs> and you, you, so you also work with, um, with an animal communicator. Yes. Uh, well, my best friend, Sonia, she's an animal communicator oh, wow. and, uh, yes, we, we haven't, it's very interesting. What is on with the paranormal right now? And what is off? We work together to find lost pets. There haven't been too many yet, but it's a pretty, but she's been a little, um, she's been moving and moved her parents, a lot of stuff. So maybe we missed them in the emails or something, but she is, um, she's amazing. And then I just had our both of our other friend, Maria um, Stoner on animal communication is, is uh, it's just so fascinating. Cause I think it's the first step to psychic work. I think when people tackle that they're on their way. I agree. There, there's an, this amazing woman and I'm going to forget her. I don't know her name. I, I can look it up. I should probably do that since we have the beauty of editing. Uh, she, Anna Brayton, Breitenbach. 
Oh, I've it's never heard of her. E-R-E-Y. Um, and there's, there's a video about her uh, on YouTube and I found it and I was going through this. This was a couple of years ago and I was like, I was like, Ugh. like I used to do before I kind of accepted that this stuff was part of my life um, because I was very much not a believer for a long time, but I would do it secretly. Um, but I was very <laughs> angry when I heard about animal communication. I was like, I was just like, this, this like bullshit. Like, that's so stupid. Like, there's no way that, that they're doing that. And when I went into that, that like highly obnoxious, judgmental tone, it was because I was really jealous. I was like, I oh. want to talk to animals too. What the fuck? And, and so I, I studied a little bit of what this woman does. And, and I was so surprised to, to really discover that it's like the same process for any psychic communication, for communication with anybody. And I started trying to practice. And there's a couple of animals that I, I, I did connect with, but it was very, um, you know, it was like in, in a certain context. So some of them like, look at me like I'm insane. And then some of them I'll hear like a little voice. And it's like, it's so awesome. <laughs> It is. Well, you know, the thing that I think why animals are easier is because they're direct and they don't lie. Yeah. Because I mean, you know, those readings where you know, you're right. And the person is scooting around it, or they don't want to, and you find out by the end that you were right. But, you know, people are very deceptive. And sometimes or as I'll hear someone complaining about their mate. And in my head, I'm hearing, you're not carrying your end of this deal. You know what I mean? Like, and animals are just like, yes, no. I had so much fun with her, with my uh, dog. I was. I and she was, communicates with him. They have a good. All the time. She says he pops in all the time. And I asked a couple months ago, because I was like, you know, I want to get a Kia Soul and I'm just going to drive around and have a mattress in the back. And I was like, ask Courage, because that's his name. Yeah, we, call him the bo- we call him the boss too. Um, he <laughs> likes the boss. I said, ask him if we. Uh, if he'd be okay, if we went across country and slept in the car and there's like a second. And then she goes, no, no. <laughs> she goes, he's clearly saying you get in the car and then you get out of the car. You do not sleep in the car. That is not what it's for. <laughs> oh my God. Like that is such a specific thing. Like that yes. is just blows my mind. Well, and I don't know, I, well like, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. A, I'm so sorry. She has no. a connection to him. Yeah. That is beyond because I remember I had changed his food and I didn't, we were just on the phone talking about something else. And she said, wait a minute. And she says, courage says that there used to be little triangles in the bowl and now there's little squares and he's not eating the squares. And I turn around and look and he's sitting next to his bowl. Like I'm not eating that. Like that's how much of a connection she has with him. In fact, in the, when I had the attachment, she I didn't know. I thought I was just in this terrible, terrible mood. And she called me and she goes, courage says, you got a really bad attachment. You're wearing it like a cape. And every night before I went to bed, I thought he had fleas because something kept pinching my shoulders. It was the, the cape of the attachment. So I, that's the only reason I knew because he, call, I will call her because he never barks. And then one night I was like, he's barking at something that's not there. And she's like, it's a man with a bird head. And I was like, is it soft? I think it's soft. Oh my God. Because I don't do that. I, that's why I'm not good with the Hecates and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, they seem yeah. to show up. <laughs> and I was like, <gasps> I don't know what to do with that. Yeah. yeah. And there's, that's like my friend, that's the, the, the demonologist. He's always like, you know, be sure you know everything about who you're calling in. And I don't. So I'm usually very careful, but I somehow thought came in. Um, but I said to her once, I, I said, that. after, I know. I do, I do too. Cause he's the psychic, he's, right? He's a little funny. Yes. Yeah. Oh, all right. You yeah. have to tell me how to communicate with him and I'll be, cause they said not. It's, you've already me. been communicating with him. You know, it's oh, individual. Okay. It's individual. He's I'm like, okay. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I, I've had a couple of good connections with him and, 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 but I, I haven't been able to like replicate them. So I'm like, all right. Right. Is that one? Yeah. That one I think is the one where ritual is probably more important, but I, uh, I remember once somebody was uh, talking to me about Odin and Odin's crows. And so I was out walking that day and two black crows start circling. And one of them is holding an in and out bag. And I was afraid they pulled out of the garbage. The so crow. Waved, the crow was. It's got really so good I, taste. I know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I waved the crow over and he dropped the bag. 
and I picked it up and opened it. They wanted the French fries that were left in it. So I opened the bag for them, threw the bag away. They could have their French fries. And I was like, did we all just communicate? What just oh, happened there? My God. <laughs> So this is amazing. I don't know where I heard this, but I feel like it could have been Jessa like yesterday or today. I don't remember. It was someone, but they were talking about psychic ability with animals, like our animal. Oh, no, no. It was, it was a, one of the things that Jessa posted on Patreon. It was um, someone had asked if animals are becoming more psychic or they're, and, and what she said, and she tapped into it and totally resonated is that we're becoming more aware of how they've been communicating the whole time, not necessarily mm-hmm. like their, you know, their consciousness is expanding. It's always been that way. Like we just, yeah. now we can tap into it a little bit more. We got to catch up to them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, now I know we have about 15 minutes left, but I, <laughs> I wanted to know, and I'm sure this is probably in, in your podcast, but what's your, all right, we can say top three if, if you have trouble picking one, but like what what are your what's your top sort of funny ghost stories? <laughs> funny ghost or stories. paranormal. There's been a lot. Um, I can tell you some stupid things I've done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. it's, when I talk about investigation, I forgot about uh, I love still photos and they're the hardest to get. And you get the and the night vision cameras are almost unbelievably hard to find that have, that are just still you know, digital. Uh, and so we were in this, I can't remember if it was a school or what we were in there taking, I'm taking hundreds of pictures and I finally get something. And because when you do that, you want to just keep, and you want to make sure wherever you take a picture, you take three. So you have a yeah. comparison. So the whole place, uh, goes in, we, everybody's got to go back to where they were sitting. We have to reassess the whole thing. We do this for about an hour. And then I realize. Uh, the, the, what looks like the anomaly in the dark is my shoe. (laughs) (laughs) I had put my foot out in front of me and I I was like, oh, it's my shoe. Sorry, everyone. Um, there's a, I don't know if this one's ha ha funny, but this is one of my, one of the strangest. Um, so I have a weird say, like even uh, whatever the attach the, when I have this funny story, it's about a fae. And no matter what I do, I must be part of them or they're part or something like that. Even I was interviewing a kitchen witch and she goes, what do you like? And I listed my favorite spices and she's like, what do you like fairy food? And I was like, okay, I give in. I give Wait, what's fairy food? Oh, cause Uh, you just keep getting that around. Yeah, like dill weed and basil and plants and vegan. And she's like, that's all fairy food. So I kind of have come to the conclusion that I'm, I'm a, I, I, we can all exist uh, because yeah. before I was like, no fairies. Um, <laughs> but me and my friend were examining this house and, uh, and we were in their garage because we couldn't quite figure out what's going on. And we like to, when we do home investigations where people call us, we try to stay as technical as we can. Yeah. So I'm recording with my Zoom recorder and, and, and I said something about a fairy and she said, uh, I heard you're supposed to throw rice on the ground because they rushed to pick it up, which is not true. Um, <laughs> and she's like, and she was even like, I, I don't know if that's true or whatever. Mm. And, you know, it's like leprechauns. If you throw a shoe, well, that's from a you know. scare. That's from a horror movie in the eighties. Oh, so she says that. And then I think I say, I never heard that or something. And so you hear our conversation and then directly into the microphone as though someone is talking over us. First, you hear someone go like, so really made that noise like that's so stupid yeah. and then like sort of as a little act of revenge she talks at the the fae talks at the same time that my friend does in her voice so you hear my voice my friend's voice talking once and over herself as though it's two people and I think it said something like I can't remember right now but it was like yeah did you pick it up but it was it's, it was amazing to hear the two, you know, she's talking over herself. What? So they can kind of mimic voices, which is, is, I know it it is it's, but it was like, I think they were like, yeah, we're not picking up your rice or whatever it was. So that was one of my, (laughs) that was one of my favorites. (laughs) She's like, what are we stupid? We're going to pick up your rice. Um, The other one that was very fun 
uh, I, in fact, I just did a different podcast. But I'm, this was like, there's the tunnels of Portland, which some people will say they're not that haunted. Oh, no, they are haunted. Crap happened down there. So they have these tours and everybody goes on the tours and that's great. But when you have a place that's traveled that much, yeah. it gets like the spirits there's back off. Or, yeah. Right. Oh, oh okay. okay. Like okay. you'll get the, the ones that want the attention will come forward and other ones will go, I got to get out of here. These the Leos of here. the group. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. They're singing and dancing <laughs> um, or even ones that want to be connected to people. But usually the ones that are more intelligent hauntings go elsewhere. Um, and uh, underneath the comedy club that used to be there, they were not open to tours. They had just been downstairs. It was just refrigerator and storage. And they had some terrible stories about what went on down there. And they even ended up digging up for pipes one time and something came up and out at the owner was doing it. And also the place he was digging in had all kinds of suitcases and stuff. Cause what they would do is they were, they were Shanghai people. Portland was a Shanghai. They have a trap door where the club is. Somebody would be drinking at a bar. They'd slip them a Mickey or something. They would drop down and they'd be down in these tunnels where they'd be picked up. There were several cages in there or stuff like that. Like I said, there's some people that are like, yeah, it's not that elaborate. And I was like, no, I think it was. And I, since then I found out like Sacramento has tunnels like that. I think it's, you know, whatever. It's not QAnon. It's not the deep state. But there was enough in this. So he was digging up something and he was finding suitcases and people's clothes and stuff like that oh, from the 20s, 30s, I don't know, whatever. They had just yeah. been buried there. And he said something came up and just like a black mist that scared him out of that basement for months. So then when these new owners come in, because I work for both owners, the new owners come in and they are going to turn it into a museum. We're going to turn it into a Shanghai museum. Yeah. So they are doing tearing up walls, knocking down things, which is the number one. If you want to upset the other side, yeah. start with that kind of noise and vibration. And literally I walked down, I said, can you give me a little tour? I hooked the microphone on him. We were down there like 25, 30 minutes and we had like over 30 EVPs. <gasps> and the first thing when we hit there and I, he goes, he said something like, tell me about, I'm going to tell you what happened over here. Not even 30 seconds in and you hear someone screaming, help me. <gasps> and yeah, it was just, oh it was, so, it was one of the most horrible um, EVPs I had, but one of the, the yes. funny ones, which is on um, when I made my little series paranormal Karen, yeah. there's a place, uh, um, Virginia city in Nevada is just a, a old mining town that is completely intact, yeah. completely intact. Wow. And uh, I went in, nobody was there. It was during the day. I went in and I was really just getting footage for the funny one minute video. And I did it. I come home. I take the sound off of it. I tape the voiceover, put it up. A couple of days later, I get an email and someone says at 29 seconds, do you hear someone say kill her? So I go back and sure enough, 29 seconds, there it is. A guy goes, kill her. So I'm thinking, did that happen at the Washaw Club in Virginia City? Or did it happen here in my apartment where I did the voiceover? Oh my God. <laughs> so I, I had to kind of figure that out. I think it happened there. I think it yeah. happened at the club. And it just didn't, because their, their voices land on, when they land on digital or recordings, they land in a different way than ours do. So I think it just got stuck there. <laughs> I'm like, I love, I, I love it. And I am like, <laughs> at the same time, I, I, cause I've always heard that, you know, that they, they can't, they do manipulate things. They can through their energy, if they're really good at it, if it's their thing, you know, if they were really mm -hmm. into that kind of, well, I, yeah, I think now with all the, um, I think with all the, uh, not just 5g but all the electromagnetic oh, fields yeah. that we have created it's way easier for them to talk that makes sense. and i don't yeah. even know if they know they're like a friend of mine was doing a, a house in boston that was so active they were doing it live and yeah. they one room they had everything left in there and they're hearing talking 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 all these spirits talking and then one comes in and goes Shh, they're taping you and it goes dead <laughs> silent 
right? Like they're not supposed to like, shh. Oh my God. They're like totally aware. Uh huh. Like, wait, can we do that again? Can we do that one more time? <laughs> All right. I, I just, I can't read anything, look at anything or study anything because I don't know who I'm talking to. And I, I don't even know that- what I'm talking about. Really? You know, that's why I, that's why I'm very adamant to take a mediumship class or try and learn the right way yeah. because, um, the, uh, there's a, a, something else is called a tulpa and, a, yes, I had and a guest I, on talking about it. Yeah, yeah. That I always think too, when you like, I think, um, slender man mm-hmm. was a tulpa and black eyed mm-hmm. kids are a tulpa because they started out as creepy pasta. They weren't a thing and yeah. now they're a thing. But I also like wonder, thought forms basically created yes. by us. Yeah. Uh, I always wonder if a malicious spirit might step into that thought form. Like, uh, oh, you want a thin man? I'll give or a slender man. I'll, I'll give, give you a, a slender man. man. I feel like yeah. that's totally possible. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think I'm sure I'm not the first one to think that, but I always feel like if that void is there, something will step in. The other night in our class, our medium class, we made poppets, which are like little dolls, like voodoo dolls. And I think because I'm so hesitant about witchcraft, I was the only one that was like, how do we undo these? (laughs) Um, (laughs) Because she's like, you're birthing a spirit. And I swear, before we even got to the part where we're supposed to like birth it, it had a name and it was talking to me. And I was like, "Mm, I I think I'll retire this fast because- It just, maybe it did happen that fast and maybe it was all good because I know even my demonologist is like, you have serious protection, Karen. You like, I have walked out of things that everyone else didn't, but I thought it happened so fast. I was like, yeah, I'm not quite comfortable with this. That makes sense. I, I feel like it's like, they're just standing by like, you know, like when you do double Dutch, Yes. And like that person who's like waiting to jump in the middle, <laughs> like when the I energy is right. <laughs> I think I have that going on. I just put, um, I of Horus stickers above all my doors. I just ordered little ones and I put them above my doors and started, uh, and it is really good and quiet now, but I also think, so you finally quieted it down and now you want to be a medium and all these people are coming to you. So you got to, you know. <laughs> Relax, relax. Well, I, I, I had mentioned a couple of months ago, and I think maybe we had talked about it. I, I was starting when I was with clients, I was, I was tapping into whatever attachments they might've been having. And I didn't feel like I could handle it. So I, I started working with a sh- like a shamanic teacher, um, who I'm going to be working with officially in September. She's going to do like an intro to, cause I was like, I need a different lineage to same as you. Like I needed some other frame of reference for this stuff. And she had recommended a course, which I have since pulled out of, but it was called compassionate depossession. So it was like real psychopomp, like working with the entities and helping them cross over, you know, letting them know, like, you know, you're coming to me, like you're coming, you're making yourself visible because you know, it's time for you to go. That's actually from my teacher, Lainey Risto, but she, she always says that it's like, she had mentioned that when, when a being who's going to try to trick you and be like, no, they're mine. You know, that, that those beings are, you know, like they're showing themselves. So there's something that they're not understanding that, you know, that they can actually move somewhere else. And, and that's the job is this compassionate sort of depossession. But I, I, I was also considering this, this idea, you know, how like we sort of split, like we fragment Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and like we have soul pieces and that it's almost like that dream that you were talking about that your friend had, um, who's like, you know, you go around and you, you sort of pick up the pieces and you, you kind of bring it back into your whole self. And I've heard that process, you know, that a lot of, you know, we try to do that process in life, but that once you pass, once you transition that you, you pass over and then you've got to do that. You still have to do that process. If you hadn't done it in life, you do have to kind of go back and retrieve all these sort of soul fragments before you can yeah. go into the next space. So I was talking to one of my friends and I think it was Andy Mur- Maybe it was Andy Murphy, but we were talking about, um, so if I have a past life, that I am aware of and I'm connected to. And I, like, I know there's, and I'm just referring to one for me, which through a series of readings and my own experiences, I've been able to confirm. And it happens to be someone I can look up historically and like confirm it and then connect with. 
and it sounds crazy, but I always tell people like she and and this incarnation was around the 1920s, 1930s, and um, and I'm always like, if I start talking like her, then you can commit me. But like I do talk to <laughs> her, and I can hear her in her. She's always giving me like old timey advice because it's always ah. phrases that I don't understand. I, I'm like that's one of your like old timey phrases, isn't it? And then I have to look it up and, and it's great. But the going back to, uh, going back to the, that sort of um, the splitting. So I, I do talk about it differently. I feel like it's not as a, a split. It's um, the words I was getting was expulsion. It's a portion of your sort of, you wear this condensed bundle of networks. We think, and visually it's nerves, like physically, but energetically we are a, a condensed, highly condensed, organized pattern of networks. And, and it's almost like looking at um, stars in the sky, but like inside, and then a part of it will just get expelled if we don't keep it in. And, but it will kind of like fill back in if we, if we do heal it. So mm -hmm. it wasn't, it was just a different visualization. So it was, wasn't necessarily like breaking off and fragmenting or splitting. So then I was like, okay, there's all these pieces of us that are unhealed floating around out there. If we have attachments, that are getting in through those cracks, right? Through those spaces, those holes. Cause they always say like that the attachments are, are attaching cause there was a spot there and we all have mm -hmm. that. Um, is it, but someone was like, well, those attachments are all you or there, you know, there's also that idea of like, they are coming to you for a reason. And the thing I was wanted to throw at you to see if like this resonated, what if those soul fragments that we haven't returned are somehow still on earth. Like, okay, my past, like a past life, she didn't heal a lot of shit. There's fragments of her identity out there. What if it's the dark, like, and they've, what if they've corrupted? Like, what if they've sort of distorted to such an extent that they're still kind of linked to me and they could kind of get in? I don't know. Like, maybe that's what like attachments are fragments from like past spirit incarnations that are somehow related to, a, I don't know. Well, I think there's a, uh, well, this is my theory on that because I do, when I go to my therapist, I do the neural feedback and I have real, um, wow. I have real mediumship experiences when I do that. And oddly enough, and I know this is going to sound even more crazy, but, uh, but I'll just go with what I had, which was, yeah. it was Osama bin Laden, which is weird. But my therapist was like, but you're pretty neutral. Like I, I obviously not on 9-11, I'm yeah. not neutral on that, yeah. but, but I understand the, what the, you know, the politics of we're in the middle East, they don't want us there. Oh, there's a lot there. There's a lot that we don't know. Yeah. So she was like, obviously. And I asked, I did ask him to tell me something that only that I should, that I wouldn't know, which was weird. Cause he said, yeah. you never, you didn't capture Zarqawi. So I don't know if we already had him or he surrendered or if he, if we didn't have him, but anyways, that was his key. I never know how to find out if that isn't true, yeah. but I was thinking about that because this is what I believe. There is a consciousness and there is a soul and his soul is over. He's not hanging around here, but that consciousness, which is also parts of other people, like as part of the collective is still on that same frame, it's like sort of on that same wavelength. Mm -hmm. He said, my, my people are amassing. He said, my people are coming back together. So in other words, ISIS, or I don't know if he, yeah. I can't remember if he was Al Qaeda or ISIS, but he was like, my people are gathering. So you should know that. I think it's, there are fragments that don't come back. It's, it's such an interesting, this, this whole question goes like in two different ways, yeah. because the only place that I split from a lot of people is on like demonic and possession, mm. because there's levels to that, that like, there's a personal demon, which is a vibration, a frequency. There are the mm -hmm. higher up demons that are like teachers. And then there are random chaos demons that, I, that are like, sometimes people get, and I don't know this woman's class, so I wouldn't say anything, mm -hmm. but like a, a, a real exorcist, it's, you don't just do that. There's, I heard a guy on the radio going, Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out. No, 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 no then those are the people that end up calling me. And then I have to call my friend, Tommy, and we yeah. have to figure out a plan to get rid of it. It is, it can literally be a random being outside of you, just <coughs> causing chaos yeah. in your life. So, um, so I, I don't know. I, I just was a little, it was a little bit in me that said, when you dropped out of that class, I was like, okay, good call. <laughs> um, uh, I got, because I got scared. Yeah. Be honest, well, I mean, that was one of the reasons. 
Yeah. And sometimes people, and I keep hearing this a lot. And I said something to a girl on Facebook and then I thought, oh, you should have kept your mouth shut, but there's this, you know, I'm human. So you can't take me. So go away. And then I get an email. I said that and it didn't go away. And now my kids are being dragged around the house by something we can't see. And I'm like, yeah, this is not, yeah. The most professional guy that I go to my mentor is like, don't challenge that he is like, I have, he has to keep his ego under control all the time. He's like, I'm just trying to stay level. And, and so, um, as for parts of us being corrupt, like the program, I, I always think of that when, when it goes that way, I do think of computer programs and sort of cookies and fragments. So I do Mm -hmm. think they're out there, but I do think there is a part of us that separates there's the consciousness and the soul and the soul goes back to that place this is just my stuff i probably yeah no i love it um, I, yeah. the soul goes to that place of oneness mm-hmm. where we're sort of not separate but the consciousness is like a thought form or something else that can be left around the fragments that's such a great question because i didn't i think it's it's also interesting because all of a sudden now there are a lot of people talking about how you call yourself back Mm-hmm. that's become very popular recently. And I think it's very smart just yeah. calling pieces of you back. Um, Amy Spicer showed me there's a, t- there's two things that I think have really helped me out. And one of them was there's a little five minute YouTube and it's called 12th dimensional shield by Lisa Renee okay. and five minutes every morning, enormous difference, enormous difference in, um, And then I also did a meditation. I'll flip between that and doing one where I literally clear every, um, uh, every beat on my aura, the, you know, every color, every layer of my aura, when I was really having trouble in this apartment, that was what saved me is every day clearing the chakras, clearing the levels of my aura, making it so big and bright and Mm. cleansed. And so those are, yeah, those two habits, uh, are amazing. Yeah. Just to, to clear out and, and protect. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Cause yeah. I mean, I, I wonder, do you feel like, um, I guess with that sort of collapse of that real toxic, like to me, it looked like just sludge that now everyone is like flooding, like everyone's kind of like, everything's like bobbing up and down. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that flood, that is almost like the unleashing of, <laughs> Now I'm thinking of that scene from Ghostbusters where like they all the ghosts start coming out into the city yeah. and, and it's just like reverse, the, you know, they reversed and like emptied everything out. But it's like, I wonder if people are just way more susceptible to sort of that kind of like attachments now that m- maybe more than ever if, because of veil is thinning or, or maybe, maybe they're more conscious of it now and they can tell that something's off and that they have to do something to change it. I, I think it might be they're more conscious is because I think they were always there. First of all, with too much with people that drink too much, they're always there. Uh, that's why yep. alcohol spirits. is called spirit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also think that we are more aware. So we see them where we didn't before, but I do think it's more common. You could walk through a bar and have three jump on you and jump off a real attachment that is through, you know, that is attached to you is influencing you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I think the one, you know, uh, that, that now people are getting very in tune to, uh, somebody, some guy on TikTok said something fantastic. He said, um, if you're, you have a habit or an addiction that you don't even like anymore, you don't know why you keep doing it. It's because there's something else that does like it. Yeah. And I think the big, I almost think the mantra of this year, there's two about um, 2021, which is it's a five, it's a year five. So it's about freedom. Mm. It's also just know who you are and that can be just from saying it, it can literally be from pushing away from others. Like, what is my opinion? Like, am I asking 10 people what they think I should do? Sit down and ask yourself, and you may need somebody to help you with that, but it's just this very strange, almost saying over and over who you are. And and that I think is what we gotta do because that keeps the sludge out that we're all walking, it kind of pushes it away. Wait, I know who I am, I'm not part of this cookie batter. (laughs) <laughs> I was like, yum. 
<laughs> Let me eat the sludge with a spoon. Oh my God, Karen, that was that was like what a perfect way to wrap it up. Oh God, I'm glad you're happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, so are you, you're coming, you're, you're going to be performing in July, right? You're, you're starting everything up. You started already. Yes. Have you started stand up? Like, have you started standing up already? <laughs> yes, I have. We, there's a lot of local shows. I usually only promote if it's something big, July 24th, I'm headlining at Flappers. If you're in LA, awesome. um, going to be September 17th in Decatur, Illinois, doing a dry bar comedy going to be in Utah in Ogden and Provo the weekend after the 24th, 25th. And I'm trying to get my calendar all set. If anybody, the easiest thing is to follow my Instagram, which is at Rontowski. Or um, if you go to my website, there's a little newsletter that I always forget to send out, but I'll remember. <laughs> <it here. laughs> if you put in Rontowski, you'll find me somewhere, all those yeah. things, Facebook and Twitter and whatever. <sighs> Instagram is my favorite. So Yeah. Thank you so much, Karen. Such a pleasure. Anytime. Thank you. We'll have you on my podcast. I would love to in a heartbeat. We'll do that. It's right, recorded. We'll <laughs> <laughs>